the sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton Dutch would be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starter running back there. They're going in a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about C.D. Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi, the Prince of Parts, the Hustlers, the people to bust up, and everybody else in between. We've had a stack show. We're rolling along. Uh, tonight, we've got some schedule changes coming up. Uh, next week, we'll get you caught up to date uh, with that. Let's get a couple of more best bets from Julio. So, uh, Julio, it's a big card uh, tomorrow. There's a million games. Uh, you said you do like Colorado. You're going to lay the points for the Colorado Buffaloes against that North Dakota State. What else do you like? Not just um, tomorrow, but Friday and uh, and Saturday. I'm looking at Buffalo, Buffalo minus three and a half, minus 165 on the money line against Lafayette. I, I'm, I, I'm kind of wanting to take these ugly dogs. I'm, I'm looking at a lot of these lines, like Southern Utah, 30 and a half point underdogs against Utah. Uh, uh, Murray State, 46 against Missouri. I mean, we're talking about some really ugly dogs, but I do like Connecticut. The Connecticut Huskies plus 20 and a half against Maryland. As I mentioned, uh, West Virginia plus eight and a half against Penn State plus 250 on the money line. And I really like Colorado State. I think we can get through the back door with uh, Jay Norvell's Colorado State Rams. I think this is the year they finally make it to a bowl game. 32 and a half point favorites against a 32 and a half point underdogs against a Texas school who's gearing up for a trip next week to Ann Arbor. Late Good in the call. game, I think I think Sarkeesian takes the foot off the gas pedal while Norvell and the Rams uh, sneak through the back door. So Colorado State, I really like them as 32 point underdogs. I, don't, I like the favorite as well, or the over, excuse me. The Michigan, it is interesting with te- Michigan and Texas looming. There's a bunch of teams that have big games coming up the following week that are laying points. So it's something to keep your eye on when you get into the fourth quarter of play where our team's going to take the pedal off the metal a little bit. I think, though, it's a little dangerous. It wouldn't surprise me if Texas murdered them. But Texas lost a lot of talent on the offensive side of the football. So they're sort of rebuilding a little bit. They're obviously going to win this game. You know, Julio, I would say if Colorado State can give you like 14 points, you'll be able to get there. Because you know Texas are going to get into the 40s here, right? Te- they're they're going to get to the 40s. So is, can Colorado State give you two touchdowns? That's the question. You, 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 you want to know what the team total is, Gabe, for Colorado State? 
13 and a half? 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Yeah, 13 and a half minus 130. So there you go. That's the magic number, my friends. I think Colorado State can get uh, two touchdowns in this game. The total 60 and a half. I really like that number. Uh, Colorado State, <laughs> excuse me, the, they're one of these schools. Uh, Trenton Norton, I believe, is the wide receiver. He was getting looked at by some big time schools. I mean, he was offered a ton of money. He decided to stay in Fort Collins and play with the Rams. He, he could be an All-American wide receiver. So I, I, there's something about this Rams team. I think this year's the year they finally get over that hump. And Jay Norvell, who left Nevada, can finally uh, get to a bowl game. You know what? Um, I can't wait for that Colorado State-Colorado game this year. That game's going to be oh, lit. Yeah, it's going to be crazy in four cold. Colorado schedule is tough, man. They open up in North Dakota State tomorrow night, off to Lincoln, Nebraska the following week, and then they go to Fort Collins, Colorado State, and then it really gets harder after. So Dion's going to be up against it. Big Card Julio uh, kicking it uh, with us. Cam, uh, what do you like uh, tomorrow? What are your picks? Uh, the, the, the Minnesota Golden Gophers game is a game that I've already bet there. It's what you talked about. I'll take Braun over North Carolina with their speed. That's the game that I really, really like. Uh, I was actually looking at the dog uh, in the Colorado game. Julio likes the buffs. I guess they, they got to come out hot, but I like the over in that game, but so does everybody else in their mother game. I kind of worry about that. I think uh, when we did the show today, is like the most bet over total so far of the early games. Uh, I think it could get there, though. I think Colorado's defense still has holes, and North Dakota State could score some points in that game, but I'm on the Golden Gophers uh, big time. Gabe, I have a question, though. Hasn't Texas historically, they're horrible with look-ahead spots and sometimes in the opening games, like, they had problems with Rice. Like, they come out of the gate so cold sometimes. So, I'm kind of with Julio on that one. I'm not sure if they're going to, you know, cover that number against the Rams. It's a lot of points. Like, I would, if they win by, if they win 40 to 10, they still don't cover the spread. That extra two and a half is a, is a little bit much. But between, and listen, Michigan play Texas the following week, and... I hate low-hanging fruit and cliches that people yeah. often use, but this actually is true in that they're not going to want to give away a lot. And I'm going to say this even more so for Michigan. You know, Texas, whatever, they got Quinn Ewers. We kind of know what they're going to do. Texas are going to throw the football, but we should know Texas lost their two-star wide receivers, right? So and I know, but they, br they brought Murphy. in, though. The yeah, they lost. Yeah, the Texas, yeah, Texas have lost a lot of talent. On both sides of the ball, but they did bring in a ton of people. Like I said, they lose, they lose Xavier Worthy, they lose the the other dude that went in the first round. But um, they bring in Isaiah Bond. They bring in the Bond kid from from Alabama, who's a freaking stud. So like they're going to be fine. But my thing with Michigan, and I do believe I'd rather lay the twenty one and a half with Michigan than the thirty two and a half with Texas. Number one, it's a, it's a bigger number. Michigan's defense is better too. Like, Michigan's defense is really going to cause Fresno problems. So, like, we know Fresno's not going to be able to score very much. So, it's – and Michigan doesn't have to get that much to – like, Michigan could win this game 20, 24 nothing. They could win – I'm thinking they're probably going to win more like 31-7 type thing, 28-3, 28-6. Like, I, I don't want to get too cocky or confident, but I don't – I'm not sure, like, Fresno score a touchdown. Right, like Michigan's defense is freaking scary, scary. And uh, Fresno's going to have a hard time dealing with this. Yeah, I think the game does go under in the Michigan game because I don't think Fresno's going to score. But Michigan have a new coach, new quarterback. It's a new offense. Like, it's a new everything for Michigan. And, they, you know, so they're going to want to just get through this game. So I'm just saying, look for Michigan. They're just going to run the ball like 70 times in a row, I bet, on, yep. uh, on Saturday against Fresno. Right, this is what they do. This is what they did before. Sharon Moore was the offensive coordinator last year. He's a very run heavy type of guy. They'll want to get the they'll want to get Orgy in a little bit at their quarterback and throw the ball a little bit to sort of, you know, get their QBs ready for, for Texas. But I guarantee you, and Sharon Moore likes running trick plays or unpredictable stuff. That's why Michigan suddenly got better. Michigan always had talent over the years, guys, but they got better. Because they got a little ballsier on offense, right? They would just sort of, you know, they were more aggressive on offense with Sharon Moore. So Sharon Moore's not the OC anymore, but he's the head coach. So you know they're going to have the same type of theme here. So look for Michigan to keep it very vanilla in the second half if they get a lead on Fresno. 
which will help the under. And Michigan will still cover because it's only 21 and a half points. Uh, I think that is a great take, Gabe, but I'll tell you, that's the whole thing. Yeah, you're right. You don't want to give Texas anything, and and Michigan can play that vanilla game. That's what they do. You want a street fight? Fresno has it. Like, that's the Michigan has defense, mean guys, battle you, beat you in the trenches, and that's the thing. And then uh, then you play the Longhorns. I agree with you 100%. I love that under. And I can live with where Julio's gone with the 32. It's a lot of points. I'm looking at a lot of uh, a lot of these underdogs actually out of the gate uh, tomorrow. Um, under plays that I've got tomorrow here, someone brought it up earlier. I don't know if it was you, Julio. You talked about Kansas like 45 and a half, mm-hmm. or it was Missouri? You talked about Murray State at Missouri. Um, yep. yep. Yeah, I tell you what, um, Missouri could name their score there, guys. So be careful with that one. But it's another deal. Where is Missouri really going to want to show everything and? Are they going to want to, like, how many points do they really need to score? I know it's a lot of points, but this Kansas game against Lindenwood, Lindenwood's going to have a hard time. Like, Lindenwood was an F, was a D2 school, and they, they got promoted. They Now they're an FCS team. So, But the thing is, they're having a hard time at the FCS level, these guys. And now they're playing against the Kansas Jayhawk team with Jalen Daniels and company. I think I think Kansas are going to murder these guys. Lindenwood? Like, it'll be one of – It'll be one of those crooked scores. Like, you'll be like, oh, God, Kansas won 72 to nothing or something. Eh? Like, I think they're going like to kill them, kill them. Sounds like a cooking school. Lindenwood? Like, what? That doesn't sound like real. School. Yeah, high school. Yeah, it does sound like a high school. For sure. Later, Julio. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of of depth there. Francis Tiafoe, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton could actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, He'll be their starting running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Dodgers up 6-4 right now, going into the bottom of the seventh inning in a potential World Series uh, World Series preview between the Dodgers and the Orioles. Although Houston, Yankees, Phillies, and uh, and others would have something to say about that. So it's great to have college football back. And tomorrow night's one of these D-Gen special nights uh, tomorrow night in which it's, it really is. There's just a ton of these different games that are all... Um, 
that are all massively point spreaded and some of them that some of these underdogs are going to get murdered and some of them are going to cover now as i was saying before we'll bring Babano in in a second but i was talking about ruckers so rucker season win total is six and a half they won six games in a regular season last year they won their bowl game to get them to seven that doesn't count uh, with the win total but uh, and it, it is shaded to the over you got to lay juice it's like minus 150 145 150 over uh six and a half uh, so it was 130, but it's gone up a little bit. Uh, I can double check what the current price is. We'll see. But we got 130 on the screen here. Anyways, so they open up with Howard tomorrow. They're going to win that game. So then you got 11 games left after that. So th- basically, they got to go six and five after they win this football game. And as I was saying, Rutgers, four of their five starting offensive linemen are back. They got a running back to rush for 1,300 yards last year and eight touchdowns. They got some good backups behind him. The ground game's going to be fine. It's Rutgers and Chiano. They're going to play physical football. They actually have really good wide receivers, but they never have a quarterback that can get them the damn football. They bring in Callie McManus from Minnesota, who's not, he's not a great passer, this kid. He can run. He's got heart. He's one of those raw, raw type of QBs. But he's an upgrade to what they had. Defensively, they're stacked, okay? Uh, they only gave up 21 points a game last year, despite being in the Big Ten. They had a hard time getting to the quarterback, but they have a really good secondary. Their D-line is more experienced now, so you know they're going to get to the QB. And the kicker for Rutgers to the over this year, guys, is the schedule. They don't play the Michigan Wolverines. They don't play the Ohio State Buckeyes. They don't play Penn State. So you're in you, you're in the Big Ten. You're not playing the Big Three. So you don't get Michigan. You don't get Ohio State this year. You don't get uh, Penn State. You don't play the Oregon Ducks, and you don't play the Iowa Hawkeyes. So this is five, like, really good football teams and Iowa's defense great, whatever, but, like, that you don't have to play. They have to play USC, UCLA, and Washington. It's like they got the Pac-12 schedule type of deal where it's like Rutgers went to the Pac-12 or something like that. They're, you know, they play, they play uh, Nebraska and they play Wisconsin as well. They play Virginia Tech. So it's not all cupcakes or anything like that. But like I said, they beat Howard. They got to go six and five. I see Babano nodding his head uh, right now, which I assume is in agreement with Rutgers over six and a half wins. Babano, how you doing? What do you think of Rutgers wins? And then we'll get into the football game tomorrow with Howard and uh, and Rutgers. Uh, what do you think, Babano, of Rutgers season win total? Uh, yeah, the schedule set up perfectly, Gabe. There's no question about that. Um, I think the defense is going to be pretty solid for Rutgers when you look at it. Obviously, like you said, the schedule is good. With Shiano, one thing we've seen from Rutgers, even when they've been undermanned, even when the offense has been awful, even when the quarterback play has been miserable, they they battle, they compete. You know, it's a hard trying team, and now you think they can maybe turn some of those close losses into wins, especially with an easier schedule. The one concern is because I I didn't pull the trigger on Rutgers over. I lean in that direction over six and a half, but I don't like this quarterback, and I know they had a lot of quarterback issues before the Greek stallion Kaliak Manis getting him. But I watched a lot of him at Minnesota last year. Just wasn't very good. Didn't do it for me. Didn't think he was that good. And I worry about the quarterback position quite a bit still for this Rutgers team. But you're right, Gabe. Schedule's manageable. There's not many teams where you can say no Ohio State, no Penn State, no Oregon, no Iowa on the schedule. But you can say that about Rutgers. And you forgot Michigan there, Rebano. The defending champions. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm just but yeah. you're right no Cali mass he's the wild card right and i was speaking yeah. with someone who was out of rucker's camp and he told me man the team is like banging these guys are ready to go and he goes you know and he we we're talking he goes they're gonna go over their win total six and a half but and but people are talking like college football playoff and this and that i think if Cali man is plays whoa, whoa, whoa. quality quality football they can go eight and four yeah. Right. I think like if, if it's, you know, six and six, if he sucks and if he's OK, we get to seven and we win the bet. <laughs> but they're good. Like I said, the way I look at it is you beat Howard. You got to go six and five after that. You could just grind this out, go six and five. And we should note, too, out of the Virginia Tech, Wisconsin and Nebraska, two of those three games, like a lot of the games are at home, too. Like, they get the Washington Huskies on a Friday night, September the 27th, one of those Fox TV games they're going to have this year. So, if, if Fox Friday night game is going to be lit. So, they're going to have, uh, it's uh, Washington and Rutgers. Rutgers go to L.A., though, to play uh, USC. They host UCLA, which uh, we'll get uh, you guys' takes on a UCLA game. But what do you think, Babano? And go quickly. We only got a minute here. We got to get to a lot of games. 
what what are your thoughts on Rutgers and Howard tomorrow? If you have any, if you don't, fine, and we'll move on. Well, Rutgers, look, they got to come out and make a statement. Howard was not as bad as they've been in previous seasons last year. How will they be this year? We'll see. I mean, if you're Rutgers, though, you've got so many advantages. I worry if Howard's going to score. Uh, I lean favorite. I didn't bet it, though. I'll tell you one thing with Rutgers. They are ruthless. They score late touchdowns. Like, they, they will run up. The, Shiano will run up the score on you if he can. And they'll want to get the tone going. I think the over is the play here. There'll be enough points. I think Rutgers are going to get to the 40s. So can Howard Howard give you a touchdown? This game probably goes over. And if Howard gives you 10 points, this game's going to go over, right? Because I think Rutgers will probably get to 45 or so. And you know, the total is 49 and a half only in that football game. So that's the way I'm looking at the, uh, the over uh, in that game. Uh, we got Fordham and Bowling Green. Here's another one, guys. Um, Fordham are a very experienced football team on both sides of the football. They're not going to be overwhelmed. Like, you know, you get into these MAC teams laying this many points. It's not like these MAC teams are going to have super better athletes uh, than a lot of these FCS teams. So I think a lot of these MAC teams tomorrow are laying too many points. I think Fordham are live at plus 17 and a half. And I think this game's going to be a track meet. Bowling Green are going to score on Fordham, but I think Fordham will be able to punch back and keep within this number, guys. Um, I'm looking at Fordham here, Babato is a very live dog, plus 17 and a half. And if I don't win it, I'll hit the over 55 and a half bet. So, um, you know, I'll go one and one or two and oh. We'll get your guys' thoughts on the other side. Let's roll. sharpest football contest show in the land the las vegas football contest show focuses on circus sports million circus survivor and the westgate super contest handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season with two former super contest winners brady cannon and james salinas a former nfl player mike pritchard and over one million dollars in contest prize money won combined the las vegas football contest show will have you prepared this season like none other Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. And you have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starter running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, this is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi. So, yeah, look at these games uh, tomorrow. I like the over 49 and a half in Howard and Rutgers. And I'll be honest with you guys. Even though I like Rutgers over six and a half wins this year, I don't like the minus 36 and a half points here. Like, you know, I mean, like Rutgers won't take the pedal off the metal, but still. Like, you know what I mean? Like, their, their quarterback isn't great. They're going to run the ball a lot, 
right? Like, let's just be real. They're not a pass-happy offense. So, number one, the clock is going to tick. Yeah, they'll score at the end of most of their drives, but the clock is still going to be ticking away. You know, like, this football game score wouldn't surprise me, like, 45-17. You know what I mean? Like, you know, hell, even 50-20 to 20 or something like that we still cover. It's a lot of freaking points, man, like, to win by 37. Even though, oh, Rutgers defense, and I just big them up. But, yeah, it doesn't mean I think they're going to win by 37 every week. Right? Like, so, wow. even against Howard. And Howard have, like Howard played last year. Howard play FC, uh, FBS teams every year. They punch back a bit. You know what I mean? They lose, but they punch back. They, they've scored touchdowns. And one thing, guys, if you'll notice, with Howard, Tuba Battle last year, when they were down at the half in two football games, they scored two touchdowns in the second half. They don't quit. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, we're losing 35 nothing, but we're not going to quit. Like, you saw that with Delaware State last week. We're not mm-hmm. quitting. Right? It got away from them. Hawaii played better in the second half, but Delaware State still showed a lot of heart in that game. It doesn't take much, guys. The, these spreads are just too high. So this is what I've got played here. I got the Howard 36 and a half. Howard Rutgers over 49 and a half. Fordham Bowling Green over 55 and a half. Fordham uh, plus 17 and a half and i got more as we roll along we talked about the um the jacksonville state uh game with julio earlier uh um we're laying we're gonna lay it up uh, well uh, you know what i might play the money line but it's minus three i think the, the game will go over though jacksonville state coastal carolina and i like uh the home team with jacksonville state one favorite i do like guys tomorrow uh kansas i think kansas are gonna murder lindenwood <laughs> and, and look, take a look at uh, take a look at Kansas in the first half too, just like in case they really take the pedal off the metal a bit. But I don't think Lindenwood are really going to score. And like I said, I think Kansas will be ruthless. Jalen Daniels is back. Like I said, my prediction, Cam. This is my prediction for this one. Like it's going to be a crooked score number. I'll call fifty nine nothing. Fifty two three. What do you think, Babano? It's a lot of points, but Lindenwood are a what, bad FCS team, bro. They're going to get lit up by Kansas. Team total? This what's isn't a wide. Like Kansas' is offense though. is good. Kansas' <laughs> offense is good. Like, what's they're going to put points up. Babano? Six and I'm a half. I'm passing, but I, I, like, I prefer first half if I'm taking Kansas. Yeah. I like the over in the like Arkansas that. game, too, with over 57. I think that's actually not a bad look with Bobby Petrino back as the OC. And they're actually going to play probably a little faster with him back. He usually plays up-tempo offense, Bobby Petrino. Over 57? Back, Arkansas, yeah. Pine Bluff, and Arkansas. Taylor Green, over. the Boise transfer, now the quarterback at Arkansas. So they'll probably run over and Pine Bluff score a lot of points. That's an over. As long as you get something out of Pine Bluff, that game should go over. Murray State of Missouri is 46. I like Kansas more. Lindenwood are worse. Like, Lindenwood are bad, bad. Yeah. Murray State, you know, they had a bad year last year, but let me let me double-check Missouri's schedule here, guys. I've seen – is... here's the thing about Missouri. They've had a lot of these games in non-conference and against FCS teams where they've gone through the motions. They've won by 17. They've won by 24. Yeah. They've won by – they're not a reliable bigger favorite, at least to me, and at least not in recent years. And Brandon in St. Louis, who's a Mizzou alum, says he likes Murray State in this football game. He texted me. Oh, he's like, we don't go. win these type, we don't cover these type of numbers. They just, you know, get out of Dodge win That's by thirty five. That's what I saw when I looked into this game. Yep. Well, this is one where if Murray State can score, they'll cover, and I think yeah, they'll yeah. be able to score. I think Murray State can give us fourteen, maybe seventeen, and Missouri will drop like fifty five on them or something. The thing with Missouri is you don't want to get anyone hurt. That's the yeah. big thing, right? You got your quarterback back. You got Luther Burton, the third back. You know, you're a freaking explosive. A lot of, yeah, they go yeah, a lot of people think, yeah. yeah, a lot of people think they, they, they're a playoff contender. Their schedule is tough. I've been a big Missouri guy over the last like year and a half. I caught on that this coach is like doing something special there, but they're also in the SEC, right? So it's their, their schedule is a bitch again this year. So and that defense um, took a huge step forward from Missouri last year, Gabe, but they lose a lot from that defense. I think the defense will step back a bit. They are terrific. You don't know, no, I think offense. they're going to be able to I think score. Their defense, I think their defense will be fine with Bano. They did a good job in the transfer portal. They've done a they good did. job recruiting. Like, they and get they top, they're right top 20 recruiting. He's yeah. a good coach. Like, I think their defense will be better, but I know what you mean. Yeah, they lost, guys.
the sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judd joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes. Jefferson a better player, if you want to believe that. I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starter running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about C.D. Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Six four for the Dodgers. Bottom of the eighth inning. Inning is just starting. Mookie Betts uh, just popped out to center field right now. If he catches it, which he will, and he did. So a one out right now in the eighth inning. Dodgers up six four on Shohei Otani bobblehead night. And speaking of which, actually, I don't think we got the picture up. Uh, thank Jack. If we can get the uh, the uh, the Otani bobblehead shot up uh, of the dog of the actual bobblehead. Like I said they're going for about two hundred to two hundred and fifty bucks right now. Here's one for two hundred and ten dollars. Like the dog. Pretty good. Very, very right. accurate, actually. It looks like Otani. And that dog is, they did a great job with the dog. Bang on. Uh, with a cute little decoy there. Like I said, I'm not a bobblehead. Uh, that's the name of the dog, decoy. I'm not a uh, bobblehead fiend, but I've got my own custom uh, bobblehead. You've seen it? Ever seen this one, Blue Banner? The Red Sea Special. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Phoenix Suns. Yeah, Phoenix Sun, uh, I, don't, I, I don't think I've seen you smile that much, though. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did after the Michigan was... one. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, after that, yeah, it, looks, it looks like me, too. Yeah. It's even it's got really the cracks hard. in the forehead and stuff, too. It's got yeah, my yeah, uh, yeah, tense yeah. like, Oh, wow. <laughs> it's yeah. like my forehead. Gave even yeah, there's it's a it's bone structure right down to the T. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very, very yeah, detailed. Yeah. Yeah. The lines? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, look at me. It's a roadmap. The best was Kurtz tonight game. He's like, so what about the gold ones? He's like, of course the gold ones are going to be worth more. They're gold bobbleheads, George. That was the yeah, best. Yeah, the special premium ones. Come on, Kurtz. Yeah, premium. Premium. Uh, th- gold, yeah, we'll see if the- gold. Yeah. Yep. We'll see if those are on sale after. All right. So, um, Babano, uh, we can just blast through the games, but the show uh, flies by. Um, you know what? I'll bring up the UCLA-Hawaii game, actually, right now. So UCLA are like 14 points in this football game. And the number's gone up. And I think there's a lot of people, even though I know no, barely anybody actually saw the game, because unless you were like a, a Russian hacker, it was very difficult to find that Hawaii game. I did, but even me, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't easy. <laughs> like, like all the usual sources, I was like, damn, freaking Hawaii, these stupid, like a game basically wasn't on TV. It was like on Hawaii and Hawaii TV, like they're whatever, dude. They can do a lot better job. We'll put it that way. So uh, this game, nevertheless, though, I assume this is on CBS Sports TV, I would guess. Um, 
CBS. We know. Big CBS. Oh, nice. Like CBS, yes. CBS. Good. This CFL's game. on yep. CBS Sports Network. Good. So they get this is yep. CBS game. Maybe battle. Good stuff. Yep. Cool. Rich Waltz. I'm going to be in. Good play by play guy. No. Good. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's UCLA's first game. UCLA's yeah. first game. I said uh, last night, Ethan Garbers. I caught Chase Garbers, but Ethan Garbers is back at quarterback. Good quarterback. But it's a rebuilding team. They lost their coaching staff for the most part. You've got an inexperienced coach taking over here. I think UCLA are going to win a game. But I think a lot of people are going to overreact to the same people that laid the points in Hawaii last week are going to go, oh, you know what, they, you know, they, they struggle with Delaware State. And now UCLA, you know what, I would take them. But I saw them against Delaware State last week, and they didn't cover that big number. You know what, they played better in the second half. It was bad weather. It was raining. It was the first game of the year. We'll give credit to Delaware State. You got to give credit to the opposition sometimes. The kids showed up in the first half. Hawaii looked apart in the second half. Like, it started to come together for them a bit. I don't automatically buy in Babano because a team played that it's an automatic advantage all the time. As we see in the CFL, it isn't. But in this instance, I think it is at the college level. I think the fact Hawaii's got a game under their belt, they'll be more comfortable now. And I just don't, we were talking about, man, Central uh, Central Michigan shouldn't be 32-point favorites against anybody. I don't think UCLA should be laying 14 points on the road against anybody really at this time. I've got UCLA winning this football game, guys, but by four, by three, by seven, right? One of those, oh, you know, UCLA win. Like, UCLA will walk off the field happy. Hawaii betters will walk off the field happy. Like I could, I just yep. picture it now. UCLA win by seven, and they're all going to be patting Garbers on the back on the way out. And hey, they're one and zero oh in the new era, the Foster era. One and zero, oh, and and us Hawaii backers will be going. They covered the number. <laughs> That's my take on that one. I, I yeah, I already bet Hawaii weeks ago, so I'm not jumping ship because they looked um, not that great against Delaware State. Uh, I've got issues. The, the issues that I have about UCLA haven't gone away just because Hawaii didn't look great last week. I mean, Deshaun Foster's a first-time college head coach. You've got new coordinators on both sides of the ball. A large chunk of the defense that was better last year for UCLA is gone. You know, and Eric Bieniemy, by the way, is the OC here. So let's see how his transition from the pros to college yeah, goes. Yeah, complicated uh, offense to learn quickly, man. Like Bieniemy's offense, he, he like it's not like an easy thing. He and he even said, "I expect these guys like to learn every play. Like very tough yeah. task to learn right away." Tough on college kids. Ethan Garbers, you know, we'll see some good, some bad last year. But I think that defense is going to take a step back, which is a problem because I think Hawaii can move the ball. And how much of that, too, is, look, Hawaii's playing oh, a lesser team. Oh, they lost Leidu, too. Terrible. Sorry, let me just throw that in there about the defense. Leidu Latu was a first-round draft pick in the NFL. Like you said, he was right. the heart and soul of that defense. Not easily replaceable, 100%. And how much of that last week, too, is, look, they're playing a lesser team. Uh, the weather was bad. And how much is it, it maybe they didn't show all their cards last week, Timmy Chang. You know, you're holding something back because you know you've got a much bigger game and a much tougher opponent coming up here in UCLA. Maybe they held some of the playbook in and back, and they didn't show everything against one, Delaware State. That's a big part of it as well. So, yeah, I'm with you. I think I'm not ready to lose more than two though, touchdowns with UCLA on the road. I still like Hawaii here. Hawaii's offensive line looked bad. Let's just call it out for this. That's a concern. Yeah. Like that, like, yes. they, you know, I mean, Delaware State got too much pressure too many times. And I was a little, and I was thinking, man, don't forget a lot of I know that, passes early in that game in the first half by Hawaii right. too. Their receivers weren't catching any of the footballs. But another good thing too, we'll throw in here: Hawaii special teams were very good. If you remember, they had the they had the yes. uh, nice punt returns. They had a pick six. Yep. Their punter, I think, is an Aussie kid or whatever. Whatever. Their punter was like pinning them all night and booting these seventy yarders Top and stuff. Corner all night. Yep. Great yeah, point. yeah. Like yep. so, that little that could work though. Help a battle in a game like this, getting fourteen. You know, Hawaii doesn't Absolutely. have to score, Cam. They get to midfield, punt it, pin UCLA, yep. sort of make UCLA, you know, UCLA mar- move the ball 90, 90 yards, yards guys. Yeah, yeah I, mean, think great, I think yards it's a great yards. angle. And I didn't have the Russian feed. I was in the middle of nowhere. I did not watch the game for full, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say I watched it, but I'll tell you one damn thing. People will overreact. And that's the whole thing. And if you see the second half, you guys watched the game. Hawaii did a number on them in the second half. I think this game is going to be way closer than it indicates. Marenzi, I wouldn't be surprised if Hawaii actually lost by under a touchdown in this game. And you know what would be enemy? What does he want to do? Pound the rock? Maybe some the clock rolls? I know you guys bet a lot of overs. I lean under in this game, but I think Hawaii is going to cover the number. I prefer that more. Give me, give me, give me the Warriors. It's going to say Rainbow Warriors. Warriors plus the points, please. 
That's cool that it's uh, nationally televised, CBS. So you know what? At that time, guys, man, these networks, what a field day. Like I said, ne- never been a better time. I've been following college football since the 70s. Never been a better time to be a college football fan for a TV viewer. It's going to be hell for ADs and coaches because they're going to lose a lot more games than they're used to losing with these new schedules. But for the TV viewer, guys, at the same time on Saturday night, we got Fresno State, Michigan, the defending champion, Michigan Wolverines, who everybody thinks is going to suck, but they're not. Uh, Michigan, 21-point favorites against Fresno. At the exact same time as that, we just talked about UCLA and Hawaii. And we got Notre Dame and Texas A&M at 730 Ooh. Eastern. So essentially, NBC, CBS, and uh, ABC are all going to have games on head-to-head at the same time. Yep. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to be at the Man Lake Day Noah at that Eagle time. for the Michigan game. Noah Eagle for the Michigan game. He's pretty good, actually. Like his dad. I like him. <laughs> I like yeah. him, too. I, him and uh, I he's all right. Eagle. He was annoying yeah. during the Olympics with the basketball. Yeah. It was a little raw-raw for the USA. But, um... It's like, just call the game, bro. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've always had a soft spot when I realized, Eagle. I was like, well, oh, I am watching NBC. I guess that's why. Like, yeah. I was mad because I had France money on France and the points. He's like, yeah. oh, in the U.S. shot. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. shut up. I, went from, I turned it to CBC and Dan Shulman doing the game. Yes. I was like, Shulman's yeah. neutral. Yeah. He's excited. neutral. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? like, Shulman's a legend. <laughs> I, I remember Iron Eagle, and I always love him because he used to do the Seahawks when they were horrible and middling. So, always had a soft spot in my heart for that guy. <laughs> well, this is his son, Noah. Yeah, I know. He's, yeah. I like Iron better. sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton should be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judd joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, He'll be their starting running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi. I got to place a bunch of bets. I got to start thinking about this. I'm leaving Friday morning, so I won't have access to you know my accounts. Even though it sounds ironic, I'll be in Las Vegas. <laughs> but it's still like it's like wow. I got it better. Like you know what I mean? I'll take care. I got to take care of these bets. So I'm sort of going systematically. All right, these win totals. I got to get in. I'll play these games. Like, I've already got it planned out. I'm, I'm much more organized than I used to be. I'm like, all right, 
I'm going to bet that game at this book. I'll watch that game later at that book. I'll cash my ticket the next day there. <laughs> like, I've got it all got, got it all lined up. I'm a Vegas vet uh, right now. But I'm going to be watching the games. I know there's a lot of people in Vegas, but on Twitter we'll set it up. We're going to be at the Circa on uh, Friday night. We'll watch the TCU-Stanford game over at the Circa. Uh, but we'll be bouncing around Fremont Street, basically. And, you know, we'll be at Circa, but we'll also go to some of the more uh, historic places. Tony Finn's coming down. Teddy Cover's going to be there. I think we're going to go over, like, the Golden Gate or the California, one of the old historic spots. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, they got, like, a lot of good old, like, bars and restaurants in those places that people don't know about. You're right, right? Gabe. Like, Do bars and, go- and the Golden Gate is actually had my biggest run of blackjack. There's a big microbrewery the in the California place there that's got right. the games, like stuff like that. It's sort it's like sort of a local. Like the tourists don't really know these places, so it's more of yeah, it's very cool. So, but hey, I'll be bouncing around. But on Saturday it'll be real cool. Uh, Saturday morning, the nine o'clock game in the morning, Clemson, uh, Georgia, Notre Dame. Uh, is at nighttime. You got Penn State at noon as well. So I'm gonna go to the Circa. I got the state. Gonna check out the stadium swim in the sun time in the in the sun. Play some bets. Basically get hammered at nine in the morning, and yep. um, enter all the contests at the Circa. And then we got to go over to the Superbook, the, the famous Westgate uh, Hilton, and that's where Paul Bowie's gonna be. So I'm gonna watch the uh, the twelve thirty slate games, the uh, the Florida game, the Florida Miami game. I'll watch that at the Westgate. And then uh, I'm going to head over to the Mandalay Bay to watch the Michigan game and the Notre Dame A&M game and the Hawaii-UCLA game all at the same time. And what I love about Mandalay Bay, guys, you have the sp- everything's in one building, complex. You have the sports book, and you just walk across the hallway, and it's the House of Blues where they have their concerts. So basically, mm-hmm. I could be in the sports book watching the games, go in, watch like the Scorpions cover band, step back up into the sports book. I don't even have to go outside. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, just, you know, I just go in, go, go in and out. And then uh, and then Sunday, we'll be back at Mandalay and then uh, at Allegiant Stadium Sunday night. Who do you like, Babano? Uh, USC, uh, LSU game on Sunday night. Who are you taking? Uh, the, what I like the most is the over uh, as far as the total. I, I don't trust either defense to be great right away. Two bad defenses from last year. I think maybe they're both better in time. And I don't think either offense, despite losing Heisman Trophy winners and candidates, is going to drop off as much as people think. I know Jaden Daniels. You go Garrett Nussmeyer, though, he's capable. Caleb Williams gone, but Miller Moss was great in the bowl game. He's capable. And I still think the offenses are the superior units for both teams. So I like the over, and there's no chance in hell I'm laying four and a half with LSU's defense until I see something better. So by default, if I bet a side, it's USC for me. You told me earlier, Babano, uh, during the break, that if A&M have a bad season, you're going to be uh, you're going to be heartbroken and uh, lose a lot. So you're all in on the Aggies this year, and you like them against Notre really Dame like on them. Saturday. I like the, I like the coach is what I like. I like Mike Elko. The job he did at Duke was phenomenal. Two years, outstanding work. A team that would program that was in shambles when he took it over. Uh, he uh, is a great defensive-minded guy. Look what the Duke defense did. They've, he's got a great talent on yeah. defense to work with here at a and He gets his quarterback returning. Uh, eight and a half the win total. I think they can be a 9-3 and three team. I think they could beat Texas late in the season in that big rivalry game. Because I think Texas has got some concerns. They got some injuries too early in the year, Texas. So like a and I've got them to, over their win total to make the playoff. A, a dark horse shot to win the SEC uh, as well. Yep. Ian Cameron kicking with us. Cam Stewart in the house. All right, so CF, we'll get a couple of, we'll get back to call football on the way out. We'll blast out some picks. Obviously, follow me online. Uh, but CFL football, no football on Thursday or Friday uh, this week. So it's the first time this year we haven't had games on a Thursday and or Friday uh, this year because it's the Labor Day Classics and the rivalry weekend. So we're off until Saturday. And Saturday, the BC Lions, it's a home game. It is and it isn't. It's in Victoria. So it's really beautiful setting. Like, they set it up in, like, a national park. Like, they built, like, the grandstands. It's not like they had a stadium there even. It started from scratch. So the scenery will be beautiful. I would have liked to gone. But believe it or not, it's like a $800 flight. Like, the airlines are gouging people. It's an island, and they know it. And they know that everybody wants to go this weekend to this football game there. So the hotel rooms are like, you know, a thousand bucks. It's like really crazy, actually. Like the, how BC is an expensive place. So 
the Lions are in Victoria, but it's a home game. Whatever. They're going to be Lion fans. The Lions are three-point favorites. They've lost five games in a row. Nate Rourke makes his uh, third start now. We gave him an excuse for the first one. It was short notice. Last week, it wasn't really much better. He was okay in the first half, and then it just hit a wall, and it was the same. It was nothingness again. Vernon Adams is healthy now, guys. Now, Nate Rourke is the starting quarterback here. If he doesn't win this football game, like they're going to have to go back to Vernon Adams. Uh, Coach Campbell said, we're going to play whoever gets the best chance to win. Well, you were winning with Vernon Adams. He lost his job due to injury. If you keep losing with Rourke, then the season's slipping away. But I lost last week with BC. I don't have a choice but to go back with them this week. I And they're playing the same damn team, guys. They're playing Ottawa again. What's your pick here, Cam? Ottawa are plus three. The total is 51. BC are three-point favorites. This is a great spot to take BC because now people are down on them. They lost the other game. You think they're going to come back with another week, and now people are like, I'm done with this team, you know? And this is the week I think they can get well, it's it done. it's been five I weeks think... in a row people yeah, have been no, saying I don't that. Think... Yeah, no, no, I'm just saying, no, trust, trust me. Like, I bet against BC this year. We bet on them. Remember uh, Babana with the Hamilton game? Like, we we crushed every side. I'm telling you, though, this is the spot for BC, Morency. I like it because the whole world's going to get off them. I like BC in this football game. Ottawa's been great. Well, we hit the season win total. Good call, Morency. I rode your wave. I like uh, I like uh, BC in this game. Not sure about the total. I told people two weeks ago when they signed Nathan Rourke, I said, you know what? It would be a bigger deal if they got Matthew Betts back instead of Nathan Rourke. The offense, like, Vernon Adams isn't the problem. Well, they got both back. Matthew Betts got cut by the Detroit Lions, and he signed back with the BC Lions. CFL stock leader. sharpest football contest show in the land the las vegas football contest show focuses on circus sports million circus survivor and the westgate super contest handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season with two former super contest winners brady cannon and james salinas a former nfl player mike pritchard and over one million dollars in contest prize money won combined the las vegas football contest show will have you prepared this season like none other Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. And you have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton could actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starter running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> This is Sports Ray, Jai Morenzi, the Pittsburgh Players, the Hustlers, the people of Bustler, but everybody else uh, in between. All right, we've got a couple more minutes uh, here. So, yeah, BC's laying three, but battle. I've been saying it all year. I told people before the year started that I liked Ottawa. I didn't think I was going to win the win total so quickly, uh, but they already got to seven. It was it was criminally low. Same with Saskatchewan. We're going to win every win total. We already won the Montreal over nine and a half. Uh, the Saskatchewan one is going to cash the over seven and a half. 
Ottawa over six and a half is already one, but the one that I went biggest on, I can't lie, uh, BC. BC. I took yeah. BC over 11 and a half, and they're not going to get there, right? They could lose one more game, and as if. Like, you know, I was holding out hope before. I was like, you know, they beat Ottawa here. It gives me a two-game window, and they'll get better again as the season goes on. And then they go out and lose the game. And they look good in the first half, uh, right? In the first quarter, they look great, right? Yeah. Nathan Rourke started the game 9 to 10, 13 to 14. Right yeah, and then Ottawa figured it out. They were like, guys, they're running the same play over and over. And, you know, and, and like we said, BC can't tackle. But anyways, so you don't trust uh, Lane BC here. You got the Banjo Bowl with the Rough Riders. They're kind of due to Rough Riders. They've had some bad luck the last couple of games. They keep losing these heartbreakers. Toronto had no business winning the game, but they did. Rough Riders are laying two and a half points. I actually like the Rough Riders there uh, against the Bombers. The the Argos are laying five against your Thai Cats, and then you got the Elks and the Stampeders, which is a massive game. Like the like the Elks season is on the line here. If the Elks are going to get back in the playoff picture, they win this game. If they win this game, then Calgary get dragged down here. It's a massive game, like in the standings for those two. What do you like quickly here, Babano? We got two minutes. Over BC Ottawa. I'm with you on Saskatchewan. They should have beat Montreal at home two weeks ago. Uh, and I think this time at home they'll get the job. Winnipeg still only won one road game this year, too. Only one road win for Winnipeg. I think Saskatchewan. Winnipeg could only beat uh BC. Let's just call it off what it is. It's yeah. one yeah. of these bizarre worlds. Like Winnipeg's yeah. like five and one against BC the last six, Cam, but they lose against yeah. everybody. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm with Babano on this one, Gabe. I I, I like the, the Hamilton Saskatchewan and the Banjo. And I, like Hamilton. Gonna, I like Hamilton. No, no matter what the Argos, yeah. they squeak out a win. They always play the Argos tough in, in the Labor Day Classic Battle of QEW. Give me the points with Hamilton, probably a high scoring game. And uh yeah, and I like the Elks. They should have beat they could have beat Montreal, man. They had so many chances in that game. They really screwed up. Elks over. What do you stands. think, but what do you think, Babano, of your tie cat game? And for me. If Trey Ford plays, I'll take the Elks. If he doesn't play, I'm not. Uh, I can't. Like if Trey Ford plays, I'm on the Elks. If, if he doesn't, and I don't think he is. So, um, and Calgary's off getting... the buy, and they're good at home. But look at the recent home win. They lost Ottawa at home. They barely beat Toronto at home, and they had to come back from down big to win. And then they beat oh, they're BC not very by good. one. So they're not winning not by really. margin. It's hard to lay points with Calgary. It really is. Edmonton, no, if they sweep this, this little uh, turnaround. I love this. I love that old school Monday, Friday stuff in the CFL. It is, yeah. I love when they play each other again. They didn't do it for a couple of years. I like that they're doing it again. Uh, They are, right? They're playing again Friday night? Yep. Is it Friday or is it next? I know it's next week, but. Saskatchewan and Winnipeg both play each other next week. Is it Friday, though, Babano? What's the schedule? Do you have a Friday? What's, I don't know. Saturday triple header. They're both on Saturday. Uh, They got soft. I like the old days. In my day, they played on three days rest. (laughs) <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah, come on. And you want to go up against college football? Four too. days rest. So come it? on, man. <laughs> no, so yeah. banjo bowl too? Like, yeah, it's um, I gotta you love the CFL. It's the best. What do they call so the awesome. Toronto Hamilton rivalry? Battle of the QEW. Battle of the QEW. Oh, yeah. Or the Battle of the Cup. Sometimes too. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. For people to get the QEW, the Queen, the Queen Elizabeth Expressway. Horrible highway. The dump. Lots of potholes. <laughs> the, the battle of the QEW. <laughs> that's so brutal. That's the Leafs and Sabres, too. It's just like, come on, guys. Can't we do something And better? what, the Elks, the Elks and Stamps is just Battle of Alberta? Yeah, that sounds about right. I think right. they have a name for it, though. Yeah, yeah, come I on. Think, I think has got the bye week. Yeah, but, but Montreal's like, screw you guys. We're not no, Montreal, Montreal should be playing Ottawa. That that should be the natural yeah. thing. It should be Montreal-Ottawa. Yeah. And it just leaves yeah. BC out. It's like, sorry, BC. You guys don't have sorry, a natural BC. rival. You <laughs> don't. You know what Winnipeg. Mean? But, yeah, but they that's the Banjo Bowl, Saskatchewan. So you're right. I would say, yeah, the Bombers in BC, but I would say the Riders in BC if I had to. But I think everybody hates the Riders, though. I think every team's like, yeah, we hate the Riders. Uh, <laughs> everybody hates the Riders and the Argos, two most hated teams in the league. Well, now that you have Chad Kelly as your quarterback. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't be associated now with Kelly's that guy. Really Holy jeez. Yeah. It's just like, whoa, dude. Well, it's a bad <laughs> look that they keep the lemon guy suspended and Kelly comes back, isn't it? Other than that, you're on your own later. Very bad look.